It's a meat eater podcast. Welcome to Meat Eater Trivia, the only game show where conservation always wins. I'm your host, Spencer Newarth, and today we're joined by Cal, Brody, Randall, Maggie, Chester, Seth, Mackenzie, and Hansi. This is a 10-round quiz show with questions from Meat Eaters for Verticals, which are hunting, fishing, conservation, and cooking, and there is a prize. Meat Eater will donate $500 to the conservation organization of the winner's choosing. And for the stat of the week this week, we're looking at player performance in regular episodes versus guest host episodes during a regular round of trivia. The average player score is 4.72. During a guest host round of trivia, the average player score is 3.2. That's a difference of 1.52 points. During a regular round of trivia, the average winning score is 7.38. And during a guest host round of trivia, the average player score is 5.75. That's a difference of 1.63 points. It's safe to say that guest host rounds are significantly harder. I've had a lot of point three eight type answers. So that's that's you know that might Cal. Mm. I would have guessed that it, there would have been a Never mind. much <laughs> larger <laughs> differential between Well, I think we had Brody and Yanni's games had four as the winning score, and then I think yours was eight, and Steve's might have been eight, something mm. like that. Mm. Um, so you and Steve brought the average up. Cal, or excuse me, Brody and Yanni brought the average down. It's still harder, though. Uh, people will sometimes ask for harder rounds of trivia. They get it uh, when, when someone else is the host. Now, here's our infrequently asked question segment. If you have a trivia-related question for our crew, send it to trivia at themeateater.com with the subject line IFAQ. Josh Chapman wants to know, My kids enjoy playing along every week, but they especially loved the kids episode of Trivia. Will there be more of those coming out? Uh, The answer is yes. We have um, some kids-specific podcasts coming out later this year, hopefully in the next couple months. Uh, Trivia will be a uh, part of that show. Um, I think that's all I can say for now. I've heard the pilot that Phil has edited. I think it's one of the best things that, that we're putting out as an audio product. I am stoked on it, Phil. Uh, I think it is uh, a lot of fun. I, I would listen to it even though I'm not a kid. I don't have kids. Yeah, yeah, it's it's awesome. I mean, we did we made a mistake. It's sort of what we usually do around here is we talk about something like way before we know when it's coming out. Mm-hmm. There, We have no set date on when this Kids podcast is going to start, but it'll happen eventually. So this year. Stay tuned. Yeah, this year, hopefully. Good work, Phil. Hey, hey Phil, I got a question for you. Yeah, what's up? Uh, mentally, what's going on uh, every time you watch Spencer manhandle his mic like that? He's just like constantly <laughs> touching it. I mean, it. I've, talked, I've talked to him about it before, yeah. and I've just kind of given up. <laughs> Sorry, Phil. Yeah, that's, that's I okay. fidget. <laughs> I, I fidget a lot. It's okay, I just got done editing the Brody-hosted episode. Mm. Even when you're not in the host seat, Spencer, you okay. are moving that thing around uh-huh. like you're swirling a glass of... Scotch or something. Sorry, so you <laughs> would you would say it's it it does have an effect then? I, I, a little, yeah, a little bit. It's, yeah. it's not only, too hard to clean though. We're only like a hundred episodes in. Yeah, uh, one of us will will figure it out. Either either Phil will just put up with it, or uh, I'll I'll solve it and not mess with the mic anymore. <laughs> Yeah. Um, it's sounds, probably not going to be me. Messing you just with the white knuckle like the desk, you know. Apologies, <laughs> Phil. <laughs> Apologies. Right, now we have some housekeeping to get to in a previous game of trivia. We had a question about the six states that the Wolverine Foundation says has established populations of wolverines. Those states are Washington, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Oregon, and Alaska. In the follow-up factoid, I said that California's last wolverine sighting was in 1922, but that's when the species was extirpated, not when it had its last sighting. California actually had a sighting in 2008 and 2023, which are the state's only two confirmed sightings in the last 100 years. Biologists believe those two wolverines either wandered in from Oregon to the north or the Rocky Mountains to the east. Similar to California, Utah has had wolverine sightings, but is not considered to be part of their current range, according to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. There have been eight confirmed wolverine sightings in Utah since 1979, with four occurring in 2021. Biologists actually captured and collared a male there in 2022. So it feels like they are expanding their range, but the Wolverine Foundation still says that their current range is those six states. Well, I I mean, come on. It's like you're lying to your audience right now (laughs) to fit your narrative. Like, like filling folks with like how biology works, mm-hmm. right? Like your, your question was where, 
is the uh, established range. According to the Wolverine According to the Wolverine Foundation. Foundation. Right? Mm -hmm. Not established range, established population. Established population. So mm -hmm. sightings don't count as established populations, right? right? Like there's not mountain there's lions in Pennsylvania. Population. We need a breeding mm -hmm. population. However, if you also talk to these folks, like the way that they do their studies is not totally comprehensive. Like the Sierras in California, impossible, right? Mm -hmm. But, uh, or the, the, even the Wasatch range, like they're both heavily peopled, but impossible to catalog the whole range all the time. So, but it is absolutely Wolverine range and it has all the factors that uh, Wolverines need that the people at the Wolverine Society would say, these sure. things have to be met in order to have a Wolverine population. So did they ever get extirpated from California? It's a weasel, a highly mobile weasel. I find it very, very hard to believe that they did. Well, Maybe, I'm glad that's settled. Maybe in our lifetime, Cal, <laughs> they'll, uh, they'll, they'll draw that part in on the map for part of their range. Well, I'm just, I mean, it's like, again, we know that there's this mm -hmm. theme of your sure. answers not being <laughs> <laughs> like 100% the answer. Um, so Cal, I think you should we host should. an episode. No, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to argue with you. Uh -huh. That's the fun part. <laughs> you, you're fulfilling it today. Thank you. Now, the Shelby Index for today's round is a five, so I'm putting us on perfect game alert. And with <sighs> that, we're on to the game of trivia. Play the drop, Phil. Look, I need to know what I stand to win. Everything. How's that? You stand to win everything. Suckers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We have Seth and Chester with a one dollar bet. Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. And who wins trivia? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Is this is the first well, time. Not who wins, who scores higher. Got it. This is the first time you boys have put money on a game of trivia. Yeah. This is the first time. Yep. So okay. One dollar bet on the line. Five hundred dollars for everybody else. <laughs> now that football's <laughs> over, you just can't help yourself. So you need some other way of getting your fix. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Question one: The topic is conservation, and this is multiple choice. Which of these animal classes has the most listings on America's endangered species list? Is it fishes, amphibians, reptiles, or mammals? This is counting animals that are listed as endangered and threatened on the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service endangered species list for the United States. So the question is, which of these animal classes has the most listings on America's endangered species list? Your four choices are fishes, amphibians, reptiles, mammals. Nobody in the room looks very confident. Cal hasn't picked up his whiteboard yet. Which of these animal classes has the most listings on America's endangered species list? Fishes, amphibians, reptiles, mammals. You know, I don't like fishes. Why can't we just say fish? You know, uh, the, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, when they list it, the category is fishes. Oh, I know. So I, know. I respected like that and went with the, the ES. Fishes, amphibians, reptiles, mammals. Hmm. Hmm. I think we're waiting on Cal and Brody. Oh, really? Oh, I thought we'd drag this one out a little while. No, we could. What are, what are you going with? What's the first letter? <laughs> F-A-R-M. Two, two different letters right now. Which animal class has the most listings on America's endangered species list? Fishes, amphibians, reptiles, mammals. Is everybody ready? Cal? Mm. Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Seth saying amphibians, Hansi saying fishes, Chester saying amphibians, Randall saying fishes, Mackenzie saying mammals, Cal saying fishes, Maggie saying amphibians, Brody saying fish. The correct answer is fishes. About half of you got that right. Hansi, Randall, Cal, Brody, and Cad. 
fish. There are 139 fish listed on the United States Endangered Species list. That's followed by mammals with 81, reptiles with 50, and amphibians with 43. In total, there are 726 animals and 939 plants on the list. Question two, the topic is hunting. This next great question comes to us via Tim Voles. States such as Wyoming, Illinois, Louisiana, and New York offer this color as an alternative to wearing hunter orange. The topic is hunting. States such as Wyoming, Illinois, Louisiana, and New York offer this color as an alternative to wearing hunter orange. Amphibians are so far down on that list, it makes me think we ran out of them before we started knowing that they were here. Maybe. You know what, Spencer? Steve would be real happy with the way you worded this we question. With such as. He changed from like, like. It was yeah. a New Year's resolution, 2024. <laughs> You're going to have like in questions significantly less. We're going with such as. That'll make our grammar nerds and Steve particularly happy. Here's the question one more time. States such as Wyoming, Illinois, Louisiana, and New York offer this color as an alternative to wearing hunter orange. Is everybody ready? Maggie from Wyoming. Do you have this one right, Maggie? I hope so. Okay, she hopes so. Is everybody ready? <laughs> Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Seth saying pink. Hansi saying red. Chester saying red. Randall saying pink. Mackenzie saying neon yellow. Cal and Maggie and Brody saying pink. They got it. The correct answer is pink. Other states that offer pink as an alternative color include Wisconsin, Washington, Virginia, Minnesota, Maryland, and Colorado. Proponents of Blaze Pink say it's a way to encourage more women to hunt, but when the topic came up during 2015's Wisconsin legislative session, the Women's Hunting and Sporting Association objected to the bill and called it demeaning. For more on this subject, go to TheMeatEater.com and read Sarah Keller's article called Is Pink the New Orange? How about for more on this subject, we ask the two women in this room what they think. I think that's bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Which which way? I never wear hot pink. Okay. Never. So I'm not gonna let that stop me from. But do you think I it would encourage like the the like line of thought that it would encourage more women to hunt? Is that it? Just seems no. It's gonna be a hard no for me. <laughs> Maybe I don't girls. think I own an article of pink clothing, so that might just be my opinion. It's hot pink. Hot pink is the I also don't own an article of hot pink clothing. Yeah. Um, but to to make the assumption that changing what color that you can wear in the woods would make more women go out there is just so absurd and like so old fashioned. Like just put your hunter's orange on and get out there. About a dozen states disagree with you though. <laughs> Question three. You want some super fun uh, first light? Knowledge. Okay. This is uh, something that I found fascinating. Uh, some deep insider <laughs> when information. We, yeah, here when we were Cal. working on the women's line. Uh, and Cal, you were like what, employee three at First Light? Something like that? I, well, I was the first actual employee. Okay, employee zero. one. Wow, yeah, all right, carry zero. on. Yep. Uh, so when we were working on the women's line, I had uh, rounded up uh, basically all the uh, women that I knew that were guides and outfitters. And we were sending them stuff and getting feedback from them. And then, and it was unanimous. So it was like, no, we don't want any pink. However, the buyers, like the vast majority of buyers in box stores are male. And two, 100% of them said, you know what you should do with this? <laughs> put a little pink on there. <laughs> So what'd you guys oh, do? Classic. We didn't put any pink on. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Question three: The topic is cooking. Eater said this six-letter dish, which is basically Mexican beef stew, was America's hottest taco trend in 2020. Eater said this six-letter dish, which is basically Mexican beef stew, was America's hottest taco trend in 2020. Brody is confident, first one to come up with an answer. You have this one right, Brody. No, I think if anyone who spends any amount of time on Instagram Given a hint. Would, uh, would get this one okay, right. Okay, Cal, you have this one right as well. I'm really holding off on my hand. <laughs> really holding off. The Randall, Chester, Hansi, Seth side of the table is not confident. It has to do with the conversation that we had with Randall 
earlier. Okay. I spend a lot of time on Instagram, but it's mostly for health and wellness and fitness <laughs> trends. Well, uh, you know, part of health and wellness is food mm, when done agreed. right. Eater Good said food. this six-letter dish, which is basically Mexican beef stew, was America's hottest taco trend in 2020. Maggie, you have this one right as well. I, I hope so. Okay, this corner of the table, Cal, Maggie, Brody, they have it right. Our other five players uh, you guys look like I feel like it should be more obvious. Than don't know the answer. <laughs> I'm just stumped. I'm going to hear it and be like... Yeah, exactly. I keep counting that. It's probably on the menu at Chipotle or something. It goes really Six well with a letter uh, dish. I don't, oh, don't even know what you're referring to. Like it that. seems like a hint that for no some help. folks. That, that, that confused me. <laughs> yeah. Eater said this six letter dish, which is basically Mexican beef stew, was America's hottest taco trend in 2020. Do we give up our five players who have not come up with an answer? Kenzie, Randall. Oh, I really don't want to give up. Okay. No. Hottest taco trend. The hottest taco trend just in thinking 2020. Of 2020. Beef taco trends. And taco trends aren't coming to mind. <laughs> Supply line disruptions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Masks. COVID. <laughs> taco trend is just not on my. Uh huh. I think you're running out of time. Oh. It's going to be so obvious. You know, it doesn't matter. Spencer, just go. Yeah. Oh, Phil says go ahead and reveal <laughs> That was an accident, but you know, go, I'm going to Way to go, Phil. Uh, we have Seth and Hansi and Chester oh. and Randall and Mackenzie without an answer. We have Cal <laughs> saying upside down Berea. Oh, Maggie saying oh, Berea. Darn. Brody saying Berea. And they all spelled it right. The correct answer is Berea. I would have never gotten that. No. They're so good. It, they're such good. You darn. should make them is if you haven't had them. Gross amount of cheese. No, it's because the dippy sauce. <laughs> yeah. Berea was invented in the 1600s in Mexico and gained popularity when it started getting served out of food trucks in California in the early 2000s. Eater says it got national attention after a viral Instagram post in 2018, which showed someone dipping a Berea taco in a steaming cup of consomme. If you want to learn how to make it, then go to TheMeatEater.com and read Wade Trung's recipe called Venison Berea Tacos. Randall, did you know that one? I I know what I mean. I'm familiar with Berea. I just it did not cross my mind. But you weren't aware of that taco trend in 2020. It, it's still a trend. Still a yeah, trend. Yeah, that's I guess that's where it's throwing me off. But yeah, you can so go check out our, our recipe on the I'd like to. I'd like I like to how that. they're able to pinpoint when it was invented. If you'd said a six letter dish beginning with B, I would have gotten. <laughs> oh really? Quite confidently, I can okay. say. I would agree. Not. I think that that would have spurred it. It was question deep down in the memory. Question four. The topic is fishing. This next great question is via Jared Curtis. A 2008 book declared this fish, which goes by the nickname Bunker, to be, quote, the most important fish in the sea. A 2008 book declared this fish, which goes by the nickname Bunker, to be the most important fish in the sea. Brody and Cal and Randall know it. Dr. Williams has an unfair advantage on this one. Oh, really? Tell us about it. No, no. They need to stop talking. <laughs> okay. A book declared this fish, which goes by the nickname Bunker, to be the most important fish in the sea. For those of you who have it right, uh, Brody, Cal, Randall, do you agree that this is the most important fish in the sea. I think it depends on where you're at in the sea, but it, yeah. Sure. I have a hard time making just large scale pronouncements <laughs> about the sea because it's so mysterious. So you no. see, did you see no. what Cal posted about the sea? They found a beer bottle on the bottom of the Marianas Trench. Yeah. Wow. It's kind of, I wonder. What kind I wonder. Of beer was it still had the label on <laughs> green glass? So. I wonder where that started. I mean, like its drift. If it was like the rolling rock, you know, I'd like to from think. a continent away, or <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, even if it were to go beer. straight down, uh -huh. the amount of time it takes for yeah. something to get to the bottom. Yeah, it's like thirty-five thousand feet or something. Like, what, is yeah, it that thirty-seven thousand. Yeah. Humans are so impressive. We can litter uh, at the <laughs> bottom of the earth. Well, yeah, I mean, the first time we got, like, a, 
some sort of live feed down there. The first uh-huh. thing that they saw was a plastic bag going by. Yeah. Everybody got real excited. They're mm-hmm. like, oh, it's a new spe- oh, it's a plastic bag. <laughs> yeah, go humans. We're undefeated. Yeah. And now uh, where we can put our litter. A 2008 boat declared this fish, which goes by the nickname Bunker, to be the most important fish in the seas. Everybody ready? Hansi? Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Seth saying striped bass. Hansi saying alewives. Chester saying coho salmon. Randall saying menhaden. Mackenzie saying grouper. Cal saying menhaden. Maggie saying sardines. Brody saying menhaden. The correct answer is menhaden. I've never even heard of that. A 2008 Bruce Franklin book called Menhaden, the ocean's unlikely hero. He goes on to describe how billions of them are ground up and turned into animal food, fertilizer, and oil each year. Menhaden play an important role in marine ecosystems as one of the primary food sources of bluefish, striped bass, sharks, whales, and dolphins. Now, what is the advantage that Dr. Randall had? Thank you so much for asking. (laughs) Uh, Dr. Uh, Randall Williams used to work for the Tater Roosevelt Conservation Partnership. Mm. And what was TRCP doing on the uh, issue of Menhaden? We did a lot of things. Uh, it's a complicated issue because it's a marine fishery. So, like, there's different state jurisdictions. Go ahead and skip the part that like matters. That. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this reduction fishery uh, is like blowing up a sort of keystone uh forage fish that affects game fish populations and it's all the way up and down the Atlantic coast and in the Gulf. Um, and, uh, yeah, I've spent more time thinking and talking and writing about Menhaden than one might, uh, wow. ever want to yeah. in and a life. Most folks who live in Montana, we're a long yeah. ways from that are fish. The, are there other names for them? Bunker? I'm just, Pogi? other than Bunk, Pogi? Pogi, oh, Bunk. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Question five. The topic is wildlife. This next great question comes to us via Ty Brooks. Name one of the three states with Cota Mundi, according to the National Park Service. Some online pronunciations like Merriam Webster say Kawadamundi. it's yeah, Kawadamundi, um, but most <laughs> folks uh, that I hear say it are Cota Mundi. Just name one state. Name one of the three states that have Cota Mundi, according to the National Park Service. I just recently observed. Like, d- d- yeah. Are you <laughs> kidding me? <laughs> There's a little hint uh, from about five words that Seth got out of his mouth before well, Brody and I Randall been? shut him down. I've been everywhere from <laughs> Montana true. to all right, all right. Pennsylvania <laughs> to... <laughs> Mackenzie, did that give you a hint? It, she's shaking her head, yeah. yes. Look what you did. Thanks, Seth. <laughs> I mean, I don't know Seth, if it's right. I don't Seth, know. Hey, I'm going to tell you my story now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Chester, did that give you a hint? I mean, yeah, I already, okay. I already... Hansi, did that give you a hint? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Where were you on Berea, <laughs> but Seth? It, but it, it also conf- it, it oh, it confused, confused me Chester. a little bit. Right, Gave cause... him a hint and confused him. Wow. Crazy trip to Pennsylvania. I give you, I can give you, <laughs> I can give you another Season hint. Season just closed there for <laughs> yeah, quite a I can give you another hint. <laughs> okay, go when ahead. you're running your trap where I've Pennsylvania. Mo- <laughs> where I've most recently been, where people probably thought I was talking about. <laughs> I've never observed them there. Okay. Is everybody ready? <laughs> Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Seth saying Arizona, Hansi saying Texas, Chester saying Arizona, Randall saying Texas, Mackenzie saying Texas, Cal saying Texas, Maggie saying Arizona, Brody saying Arizona. Everybody got it. The three states are Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas. Nobody said New Mexico. Uh, everyone got it with Arizona or Texas. Can somebody tell me what that <laughs> is? The National monkey. Park yeah, Service <laughs> says that this animal is best described as a long-nosed raccoon. They use that long snout to root around in soil and leaf litter for food. Their diet is similar to a raccoon, which is to say that they'll eat anything. As omnivores, they'll dine on fruits, nuts, insects, birds, eggs, lizards, snakes, grubs, and more. One of the best uh, hunt days I've ever had was because of a quad Monday. Old Rick Smith and I were um, posted up on a mountain, and he is just dead to the world sawn logs. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm watching uh, some deer and, you know, really on alert 
figuring something could happen at any time. And then I looked down this old dozer grade and the only thing that could come to mind was I'm slapping Rick trying to get him to wake up because he's an international man of mystery. He's been around the world like 19 <laughs> times. And I'm like, Rick, Rick, raccoon monkey, raccoon <laughs> monkey. <laughs> Amazing creature. Amazing creature. I guess they get eaten a lot. Like people eat them in uh, Central America. What I, was this one doing that you watched? Just just came cruising down the road just and being a dinked around. It was awesome. Being a raccoon Super monkey. Cool. I was yeah. When we were in Mexico, I was glass in a hillside and I came across just this giant furry black spot on the hillside like what in the hell is that and then finally they all dispersed and it was 15 of them like all sleeping together wow. in like a ball huh it was crazy it's kind of cool, cool. About, yeah my folks are down poking around in arizona right now and their dog hank kicked up like three of them and they sent me a video and I've never seen that dog look so just like baffled. Like he's a Wyoming <laughs> dog. He's never mm-hmm. seen a raccoon, let alone see that. It was a raccoon. It's a good video. Raccoon monkeys. Yeah. Phil, we're halfway Super through cool. the game of trivia. Give us a scoreboard update. Everybody's on the board. Thanks to Seth, probably. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> got Mackenzie and Chester with one point apiece. Seth and Hansi have two. Maggie has three. Randall has four. And tied up in first place with perfect games are Brody and Cal. Mackenzie, what do you think you would have put for that last question if uh, Seth didn't give you the hint? I have no, I, I had not heard of that before. Okay. I was thinking Alaska. I was also thinking down south because there's mm. a lot more diversity down there. Oh, Chester, so. how did Randall, con- or excuse me, how did Seth confuse well, you? Well, it didn't really don't put confuse that on me. me. It threw me off a little bit. <laughs> I, w- I had Arizona in my head before uh-huh. he said, you know, he just recently saw one of those. So I thought Texas. But then, uh, yeah, I stuck with my. The funny Arizona thing is, where I recently deal. saw them was not in any state. Mexico. Oh, Mexico. Yeah. But wow, it borders really... several states. Yeah. It's true. I wish you had traveled to Berea, Kentucky <laughs> in the last few weeks and told us all about that. Spelled differently, five letters, but it would have uh, tipped me off. <laughs> Question six the topic is cooking. A sushi roll filled with salmon, cream cheese, and avocado is named after this East Coast city. A sushi roll filled with salmon, cream cheese, and avocado is named after this East Coast city. Anything with uh, cream cheese is not sushi. Just, just <laughs> getting that out there. Seth, you have this one right. I put down a city on the okay. East Coast. Randall, you have this one right. Boy, I hope so. Brody and Cal also look confident. Mackenzie, you have this one right. Maggie, you have this one right. All right. We're going to uh, load it with cream cheese. We're going to deep fat fry it, and then we're going to coat it in mayo. <laughs> <laughs> that's sushi. That's, that's sushi. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like it'll be up to Hansi and Chester if this is a 100 percenter or not. Go ahead and reveal your answer. We have Seth saying Philly, Hansi saying Philly, Chester saying Philly, everybody said Philly, everybody got it right. The correct answer is Philadelphia. This sushi roll was created during a Philadelphia culinary competition in the 1980s. Although the city is famous for its cream cheese, that cream cheese was actually invented in New York in 1872. The Philadelphia namesake was just a marketing move to capitalize on the region's reputation for good dairy products. If you want to learn more on how to make your own sushi, then watch Kimmy Werner's video on TheMeatEater.com called How to Make Sushi. They were going to use a can of cream of mushroom soup, but they couldn't quite get it to stick on there. (laughs) (laughs) Question seven. The topic is conservation. This is our listener question of the week, which was won by Keith Jordan for sending this great question. Keith is going to get a board game signed by the crew. If you want a chance to win our listener question of the week, then send your question to trivia at themeateater.com. What country is home to 40% of the world's tropical rainforests and 10% of the world's biodiversity? (laughs) Phil would like to speed the game up here. Here's the question again. The topic is conservation. What country is home to 40% of the world's tropical rainforests and 10% of the world's biodiversity? Cal, who has a perfect game going, is changing his answer. Randall just won behind them. Brody, are you confident in your answer? No. Okay. I mean, this this is a tough one. Is this, is this 
trick question. Randall was quick to answer. I'll tell you that. Maybe he's trying to get. That doesn't mean he got it right. Okay. (laughs) Randall, did did you get this one right? (laughs) <laughs> I'm trying to see <laughs> those down, seeds right? of doubt. Uh huh. Africa. <laughs> yes. There you go. What country is home to 40% of the world's tropical rainforests and 10% of the world's biodiversity? Mackenzie, do you have an answer? I think we're waiting oh, on you. Yeah, sorry. I have is one. everybody ready? Later. Oh, Chester doing a little scribbling. Chester, are we changing an answer or clarifying an answer? Uh, changing an answer. Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Seth saying Brazil. Hansi saying Brazil. Uh, everybody says Brazil except Maggie. Maggie says Costa Rica. The correct answer is Brazil. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> <laughs> at first, at first, I heard continents and I wrote down a continent and I was like, "That's impossible." And then I had to think of a country. And that's my, a good story. Man, my my brain short circuited right there. I initially read it as county, and I thought it was a very <laughs> difficult question. <laughs> well, I gotta ask why you decided to include the biodiversity part of it. Just, just a little more details. I don't know. Might, might throw you off. You'd have to um, ask the listener. Biodiversity is what you'd have threw to ask me Keith off because, like Madagascar right. and Borneo. Keith didn't have that detail in there. I mm. included that detail. It said that Brazil is the most biodiverse place on Earth and is home to about two hundred thousand species of plants and animals. A twenty fifteen paper said the country is so vast and remote that some species of birds have gone extinct there in our lifetime before biologists even knew they existed. It's estimated that twenty percent of Brazil's rainforests have been removed. Cal, you were talking about earlier about those amphibians. You're like, yeah, maybe we don't know about all the amphibians. Well, they're admitting in. Uh, uh, the Brazilian rainforest, which is what the Amazon rainforest that we don't know about everything uh, because stuff is disappearing before we even knew it was there. I'd like to have that same question for just just for my own personal knowledge mm-hmm. uh, regarding Central America. Just move her move her down a little bit closer to the equator. be interesting. Question eight, the topic is fishing. This country artist who should have been a cowboy purchased lucky strike lures in 2023. This is question eight. We still have a couple perfect games going. This is a pop culture question. (laughs) This is a fishing question. This country artist who should have been a cowboy purchased Lucky Strike Lures in 2023. Cal, is this going to keep the perfect game going? Uh, Yes. Brody, is this going to keep the perfect game going? No, I'm like, because I can't think of his damn name. Okay, can't think of his damn name. Um, That's a problem. Question is asked for some of us, it's a problem name. for others, <laughs> it's a blessing. Two perfect games going through question eight. Oh, there's two names this in my head right country now. Country artist who Real should have mad. been a cowboy purchased Lucky ride. Strike Lures in 2021. <laughs> there is Cal handing out hints, filling in some more lyrics for folks. Seth, you have this one right. I think so. Maybe Chester with a blank board. Our musician in the room. I recently know. heard the story of why he wrote that song. There's a hint. It's a he that purchased oh. it. <laughs> Sorry, I thought So we've that. got about 10 more words of lyrics from Cal, and uh, we've gendered him from Maggie. This country artist who should have been a cowboy purchased Lucky Strike Lures in 2023. Brody, how we doing over here? Not good. Keep okay. talking amongst yourselves, bro. Hey, you guys got any more hints uh, for Brody? I would suggest you not give them. Well, it, it's a good... I don't think there's any hints. I'll wait until we reveal, <laughs> okay. until I tell the story. All right. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I, Chester, our I musician could, I could like sing it. and fisherman, our singing fisherman, does not have an answer. Songwriter, I think, is... You probably want to be known as a songwriter. Songwriter, singer, artist. All right. I'm Brody, not, it's not going to uh, come to me. I love a juggler. Go ahead and reveal Dude, your answers. I don't even want to look. We have Seth saying Toby Keith. I thought I was wrong. Hansi saying Luke Combs. Oh, God. Chester without an answer. Randall saying Toby Keith. Mackenzie saying Toby Keith. Cal, Maggie, and Brody saying Toby Keith. They got oh, it. No. The correct he answer is Toby Keith. So, so here's the story. Toby Keith was in the bar after hunting, wearing camo with his buddies, trying to get these girls to dance with them. Wouldn't dance with them. They were dancing oh, with the on. cowboys wearing western shirts and whatnot, <laughs> you know. And his buddy looked at him and was like, man, should have been a cowboy. Went home, 
wrote the song Top the Charts. There we go. Nice. Huh. Well, Should have been a cowboy. That's what I'm interested in. You wasn't wearing first light. <laughs> Lucky Strike made the puzzling decision in their press release to say that the company was in disarray before last year's acquisition. Keith was quoted on their website saying Lucky Strike needed focus and vision and that he was there to pick up the pieces. Part of their rebrand was a new patriotic logo that's red, white, and blue. Keith died last week at the age of 62. What, Bill, uh, what are some famous lures that company makes? I'm not aware of much Lucky Strike. You know, they're like in Walmarts, though. Like, they're they're sold around the country. But as far as a specific thing they've created, I couldn't tell you. Phil, we have two questions left. Give us a scoreboard update. Uh, Chester, Mackenzie, Hansi, Seth, and Maggie are not in the running for the win. We've got Randall with seven points and still tied up in first place with perfect games of Brody and Cal. Phil. What do I have and what does Chester have? <laughs> oh, yeah. For our $1 bet on the side. Seth has five. Chester has three. Ooh. Oh, Chester, you'll need to get these both correct. These I last should two have been questions. a cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> that Lucky Strike press release was really uh, fascinating that they said the company was in disarray. Imagine if when we bought uh, like First Light or Dave Smith dis- or decoys, we'd be like, boy, they were a total mess. Uh, good thing we're here. <laughs> And they kept around most of the leadership, Lucky Strike did. Uh, great press release. Mm. Question nine. The topic is hunting. This next great question comes to us via PETA, Peter Hawthorne. PETA. The National <laughs> Deer Association describes this deer condition as, quote, a genetic mutation that causes patches of Ooh. white hair. The National Deer Association describes this deer condition as, quote, a genetic mutation that causes patches of white hair. Seth, are you going to put away Chester with your answer here? Uh, yes. You get either of these last two right, uh, you just win the $1 bet. What are you going to spend that buck on? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we'll go double or nothing on a there different round. I know this, too. Yeah. It's funny that you haven't wrote down an answer. I there, mean, Chester. I was we were I was just talking to someone about this the other day. Really? Yeah. Give me like some insight into how that. Comes <laughs> it was it maybe was, don't. It was my brother-in-law Todd, um, and he was talking about this deer he saw in northern Wisconsin with some white patches on it, and he was confused. Don't give out too many. That answers, he Chester. couldn't shoot it. Because he thought it might be blank, but it was, in fact, not blank. It was, in fact, this word that we're looking for, and I can't think of it. Okay. You know what, Chester? You, you may have uh, confused folks, actually. This is a, a strong story. I have a, I got a question, and I can't, I can't hmm. ask it. Yeah. Just, Randall likes where he's sitting uh, there with... Uh, I just cannot... Callum Brody. Cal's just real There's awesome. another the term. Do you care to uh, embellish on the, the type of answer you're looking for? I do not. <laughs> Is everybody ready? Just to make okay, stuff then I'll just argue one. if I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Seth saying piebald. Hansi saying albinism. Chester without an answer. Randall saying piebald. Mackenzie saying albinism. Cal saying Dalmatia. Maggie saying <laughs> piebaldism, Brody saying piebald. The correct answer is piebaldism or leucistic. Oh, piebaldism, see, that's what I was piebaldism at, is a form of leucism. I wrote down piebald. Yeah. That's my original answer. I would have been correct. Um, oh, uh, yeah, Mackenzie was cheating and saw that you wrote no, down piebald. No, I specifically. Well, it's kind of I would have written it down to. if I was cheating anyway. <laughs> um, I thought piebald was just the face. No, it can no. be splotches all over. Well, if it's splotches... Uh, but I think it's like a weird... It's like a very informal term for a genetic condition. Well, it yeah. Because, like. you know, uh, Appaloosa horse, they're... That is there's piebald yeah, horses. Yeah. But yeah. that's what they're bred for. Mm-hmm. And they're not... They are no longer referred to as a piebald. Sometimes they are. Um, well, isn't certain it reduc- horse breeds. You're like, uh, it's a piebald Appaloosa? So, like, paint horses... It's technically right, piebald horse. doesn't, but what? you call them paint horses because that's just the vocabulary we use. But it, it it's like a, a genetic. I guess trait what I'm saying is I'm forward. expecting more out of the national deer. I want to know more about Dalmatia. What what what's no? that? 
I I think that's a real word. It's a, piebald. It's a region. Well, <laughs> on the Adriatic. <laughs> piebald deer will have blotches of white fur while maintaining their normal eye, nose, and hoof color. Albino deer will have completely white coats with pink eyes, pink noses, pink or white hooves, and pink or white velvet. It's estimated that about 1 in 1,000 deer are piebald and 1 in 30,000 deer are albino. You can read my recent article on the meateater.com about a piebald elk that was recently shot in New Mexico. Thank you, Maggie. Very good. And uh, Cal, yeah, the piebald <laughs> thing, sometimes it's like 10% of deer. Like you'll see some extra white around their legs. Other deer, it like covers 90% of them. They, they turn white. Um, not limited to just yeah, but, one spot. I mean, that's like part of the deal. Like I shot a doe this year that had uh, white around her hooves and I wasn't... Uh, Taking pictures on Instagram or telling people, you know what I Sounds shot. Sounds like a you problem. Pie, pie ball deer. <laughs> Phil, we have one question left. Like, Who is left in the game? Uh, Cal and Randall have eight points, and in first place, oh. Brody Henderson has nine points. Perfect, perfect, perfect game on the line for Brody. Tie this bully hotch up. <laughs> Better be a good ten here, Spencer. Question ten. The topic is woodsmanship. This climate pattern translates to little girl in Spanish and refers to when strong trade winds push warm water towards Asia. Brody, very, very confident in his answer. This may close out the perfect game for him. Distance himself from Cal and Randall. This climate pattern translates to little girl in Spanish and refers to when strong trade winds push warm water towards Asia. We better do the tiebreaker just for fun because this is such a letdown. I'm not going to lie. It is a little anticlimactic. Is everybody ready? Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Seth saying El Nino. Hansi saying (laughs) La Nina. Chester saying La Nina. Randall saying La Nina. Mackenzie saying La Nina. Everyone says La Nina. They got it. The correct answer was La Nina. Did you Set. do that on purpose? Or did you... He did the male version, El Nino, uh, you were which is up wrong. on your Spanish down in Mexico, really fast, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> La Nina's power is felt enough, across North America. Typically, this results in a drought in the southern United States, heavy rain in the Pacific Northwest, colder temps in the north warmer temps in the south, and a more severe hurricane season. La Nina also creates colder, more nutrient-rich waters off of North America's west coast, which is beneficial for squid and salmon. Noah predicts will transition from El Nino to La Nina in the summer of 2024. Brody is our winner with the perfect game, 10 Let's get that tiebreaker one. Answers. That was, that was, I mean, we're not even gonna for Brody, do, that's like we're a not Let's do the tiebreaker, tie and then if Cal wins the tiebreaker, we'll split the thousand bucks between two different conservation groups. That sounds like a great <laughs> idea. I bet, I bet folks on YouTube would really be into that. <laughs> Can I play along? <laughs> I had, we'll split it three I ways. I had nine. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna twist my arm. I guess we'll do a tiebreaker. Uh, okay, we've, we've uh, I think we've once done a tiebreaker just for the fun of it, and that was during the wives and girlfriends episode. The listeners will. Love I think it. you owe it they to the, the, the listeners audience will love after it. Okay. that that lame question ten. Okay, <laughs> Seth, you got the lame question wrong. <laughs> Here is the tiebreaking. Can we have question. a pizza party afterwards? <laughs> <laughs> as as we're just... Throwing out requests. I got orange slices outside for everyone. (laughs) The topic is cooking. According to the USDA, how many calories are in a raw three-ounce serving of wild-caught channel catfish? Oh, phenomenal question. This is a good question. All right. Do you see the difference? (laughs) (laughs) According to the USDA, how many calories are in a raw three-ounce serving of wild-caught channel catfish? Cal, this could just be for real if you'd have stuck with piebald. I don't have to participate uh, in this. Deer question. Yeah, this is more fun. Um... Means nothing. So right, as answer. per usual, we're going Could to mean that dollar. just the, the closest. closest. This is not prices right Wait, rules. Who's eating uh, a three ounce serving no. of catfish? That's very Write it. That's how you do all that. It's just stuff. the measurements it's like, for sashimi uh, catfish. It's like if you're getting a bunch of catfish bites. It's not it's even enough for big. one sandwich. I was going to say, it's too big for a bite. Yeah. It's just like, like the new standard nutritional measurement. Do you have a uh, prep for your answer, what it would be like from an actual okay. southern I gas station? I absolutely do, what yes. Well, uh, from a fish farm. I have the fish farm difference. Uh, write your answer to point one decimal places. Oh, oh. Uh, that, way, that way we have a winner for certain. 
Um, <laughs> Hansi's <laughs> answers out there for all to see. Maggie, go ahead and participate. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh <yeah. laughs> is everybody ready? Uh, can we do it uh, Price is Right style where you can't go over? I don't think so. I, I really dislike the prices. That's just an excuse for them to give away less money when they do that. That's what's going on there. <laughs> hmm. Go ahead. Oh, hold on. We're still so waiting on Cal. You're on a dollar. You're up a dollar. <laughs> it strikes me that we could wager that. We wager that oh, right wow. here. Who is who is closer? Sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, so Seth has won the bet with Chester, and now it may wind up that Chester ends up paying Hansi because Hansi is now doing a one dollar bet with <laughs> Seth as to who is closer on this tiebreaker. Is everybody ready? Yeah. Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Seth saying 90.1, Hansi saying 90.0, Chester saying 100.0, Randall saying 97.1, Mackenzie saying 117.0, Cal saying 21, Maggie saying 30.2, Brody saying 188.0. Dying. The correct answer is 80.8 calories. Oh. <laughs> Meaning I lost my dollar. Hansi gets oh. the dollar from Chester. Oh. 80.8. I think Hansi was the closest. Uh, he was 9.2 calories off. Um, Brody job, and Cal went Thanks, with man. the widest Wait, spectrum in the room. Around. They you gave us our I lowest you're the real winner and here. highest <laughs> answers. Hansi, do you have Venmo? <laughs> well, are we going to donate this time. money to someone, Spencer? Now, that is 20 calories less than a channel catfish that came from a fish farm. So oh. your wild-caught channel catfish has 20 fewer calories than a fish farm catfish. Working for a living. Mm-hmm. Brody has $1,000 to donate because of his perfect game. Brody, where is that $1,000 uh, going? Let, we haven't dumped any money into the land access initiative in a while, so let's do that. $1,000 going to the LAI. Are we going to have another project this year, Cal? I'm jumping the gun a little bit here, but I th it's going to be mid to late March. Okay. Is, That's a quick is turnaround. Next, is our next auction. Oh, all right. The next auction house of oddities, yes. mid to late yeah. March. You yeah. haven't zoned in you on don't a spot. No, sorry, I have. So that that was the actual question. Timing is going to be mid to late March for the fundraising efforts, but uh, we got bills due on the Wyoming corner crossing case. And the reason that that is perfect for the land access initiative is because uh, as it's made its way up through the federal courts, it can have a national... Um, impacts mm -hmm. here so uh in wyoming alone 2.4 million acres of of just corner locked the most of any state in the country public ground um and then we're at like 1.7 i think in montana 1.7 million of, of actual like corner locked where uh as we all know it takes a footstep to get from public to public uh, without ever infringing on somebody's private property rights. So this is a clear, just use of uh, our access money for big access uh, impacts. So $1,000 going to the Meat Eater Land Access Initiative. We have the Auction House of Oddities coming up in about a month from now. Join us next time for more Meat Eater Trivia, the only game show where conservation always wins. <laughs>